The Abyss, 2023's most shocking disaster blockbuster, is finally here. In a small town, the ground suddenly splits open, forming a vast abyss, causing severe death and injury among the bewildered residents. Moreover, the abyss continues to expand and spread. Enough talk. Let's begin the main feature. In the quiet town of Alberg in northern Sweden, a little boy is digging in his backyard. With each shovel of dirt, the sand in front of him suddenly sinks into the ground. Seeing himself about to be swallowed by the earth below, he quickly calls for his sister's help. Hearing her brother's cries for help, the sister rushes out, grabs his hand, and pulls him out of the collapsing hole with all her strength. Their father, coming out of the house, frowns upon seeing the scene, realizing this is not normal. He quickly warns the children to stay away from the area and immediately picks up the phone to call the fire department. Unknown to them, 500 meters below their feet, Two geologists are deep inside a mine conducting an investigation. They use drones to scout and try to understand the geological structure of the area. Then they hear the sound of rocks vibrating inside the mine. Frigga lightly taps a wall with a hammer, causing it to collapse, nearly causing an accident. Her colleagues gather around in shock, but Frigga pushes them away with a serious expression, her eyes fixed on the hole in the wall. After careful observation and study, Frigga decides to immediately report the condition of the mine and stop all mining activities. Frigga realizes that if this situation is not stopped, it could lead to an unpredictable disaster. As they hurriedly return, the sound inside the mine becomes louder and louder. With rocks continually falling from above, they struggle through the collapsing rocks, desperately searching for a path to the safety exit. With the sound of rocks collapsing inside the mine, every step they take is like a race against time. Finally, they, drenched in sweat, hide in a nearby safe house. When everything quiets down, they step out of the house only to find the exit blocked. A colleague remembers another way out that leads to a mine rescue ladder. But it hasn't been used in over a decade, but they haven't gone far when they find the only way out blocked by rocks. Seeing this, a sense of despair arises in their hearts. They fall into silence. They try to find other ways to escape, but the pile of rocks in front of them seems impenetrable. Just then, Frigga's gaze suddenly falls on the stones below. She spots a gap under the rocks. Enough space to squeeze through. Faced with reality, they have no choice but to try and squeeze through one by one. Frigga struggled to squeeze through the narrow space to the other side of the blockage. Next up was Tage, a burly man but claustrophobic. As he entered the tight crevice, fear plunged Tage into extreme panic. Frigga anxiously tried to reach out with an iron rod, hoping he would grab one end so she could pull him out. However, Tage, in his fearful state, was completely irrational and unable to accept help. Faced with this, Frigga had no choice but to hit Tage's head with the iron rod. Caught off guard, Tage lost consciousness. Slumping to the ground, Frigga used the tail of the iron rod to hook onto Tage's clothes, laboriously dragging him through the narrow crevice. But an accident occurred when the fourth person was passing through. Her foot got crushed and stuck in the crevice by a falling rock. Frigga crawled in, grabbed her hand, and tried to pull her out. Tragically, another earthquake occurred at that moment, and the woman was crushed and completely buried under the rocks. Frigga, with the help of her companions, barely escaped with her life. They had no time to mourn their comrade's death as they hurriedly climbed the fire ladder and escaped the mine. After returning to the town, they immediately notified the residents to evacuate, but it was already too late. As the earthquake intensified, the town center also began to collapse downwards. Panic spread among the people, who lost their senses and sought only to flee. They ran and screamed, trying to find a safe haven. Parents anxiously searched for their children. As the tremors neared, the horrified looks in people's eyes revealed their despair and fear. 
Cries for help and screams filled the air as they ran for safety away from the abyss. Some tried to escape by car, but the vehicles became disordered in the chaos. Everyone was desperately struggling for their own lives. The noisy screams, car horns, and the loud sounds of collapsing buildings mixed together, forming a terrifying symphony of panic. Compared to natural disasters, humanity seemed so insignificant. After the panic of the earth shattering and mountains collapsing subsided, the dust gradually cleared, leaving behind a silent wasteland of ruins. Everyone was startled to hear the cry of a baby, which sounded particularly clear amidst the dust. However, the girl pushing the baby carriage was nowhere to be seen, plunging her family into endless grief. Frigga, with her family, hurried to Simon's school, hoping to find their son there, but upon reaching the school, they found only a frightened student sitting at the entrance, unresponsive to any questions they asked. They decided to enter the school to look for Simon's class. However, they found the way blocked by a collapsed beam. Mika saw a girl lying on the ground, crushed to death, Simon's classmate, which filled them with grief and despair. The family couldn't suppress their sorrow. Their voices were heard by people inside, who started calling for help. But as a geologist, Frigga knew the high likelihood of aftershocks. Entering recklessly could cost them their lives. De Beer noticed an undamaged ventilation duct overhead, so they tried to let Frigga enter through it using a rope. However, the duct collapsed the moment Tage secured the rope. Just when everyone was about to give up, Frigga saw a small hole in the corner of the wall and crawled in despite her family's objections. On the other side, Frigga found many students' bodies and heard a faint cry for help. Following the sound, she came to a room filled with dust and debris. A girl lay opposite her, impaled by metal in the abdomen, but there was a huge pit between them. While they were talking, Simon's voice suddenly came from below. Frigga shone her flashlight into the pit and saw her son in the corner of the lower level. Frigga tried to get closer, but the ground couldn't support her weight and collapsed. Nearly crushing Simon, Frigga had no choice but to call her family to venture in and help. She tied a knot in the rope and threw it to the girl across, but as the girl reached out, the concrete floor collapsed again. The girl used up her last strength and gradually stopped breathing. Now, to save Simon, they had to descend into the deep pit. They wrapped a fire hose around Frigga and slowly lowered her down. After reaching the lower level, Frigga tried to swing to Simon's position using reaction force, but she failed twice. On the third attempt, the floor above her suddenly collapsed. When Frigga swung back, a steel bar from the fractured layer directly pierced her thigh. As the building began to shake again, the girl's corpse also rolled into the deep, bottomless pit. The three people above wrapped the fire hose around both ends of the floorboard to prevent it from falling and accidentally killing Frigga, but they couldn't figure out how to rescue Frigga and Simon. Then, a metal cabinet slid down, hanging in the middle of the deep pit. Frigga, having lost too much blood, was now without strength, and the floorboard beneath her was on the verge of breaking. Simon, seeing the cabinet, had a brainwave. He used the cabinet as a springboard to reach his mother. Mika, seeing a column nearby, asked her father to hold the rope while she leapt towards it. Mika slid down from the column to the lower level in a dangerous maneuver, with Mika and Simon's help. Frigga's leg was finally freed from the steel bar. Tage and Debeer first rescued Simon to safety, but Mika discovered that the floor beneath herself and her mother was starting to collapse. And her mother, with her injured leg, couldn't escape. So, Mika first jumped onto the cabinet and then used it like a swing to bring Frigga up. However, their combined weight was too much, and the cable could barely hold. Tage desperately grabbed one end of the cable. Debeer and Simon used a fire hose to rescue Mika. But when it was Frigga's turn, she was too exhausted to grab the hose and failed twice. On the other side, Tage was struggling to hold on, and the cable started to fray and spark, but he couldn't let go for his wife's sake. Come here, bro. Yes, Tage's desperate attempts to save Frigga's life were rewarded with the trio finally rescuing her. Tage said his last words and died. In this disaster, people realized the fragility and preciousness of life and experienced the despair brought by terror and chaos. The formation of this abyss was not a natural disaster but the result of human actions, excessive underground resource extraction, unreasonable underground construction, and engineering projects led to the collapse of the underground structure, eventually creating this vast abyss. Through this painful lesson, people learn to cherish life more and care for each other. This disaster will forever be etched in everyone's hearts.